Lou Gehrig, nicknamed the Iron Horse, was the first Major League Baseball player to have his uniform retired by his team. And on May 2nd, 1939, he voluntarily took himself out of the lineup, stunning both players and his fans after his performance on the field became hampered by an undiagnosed ailment, later confirmed to be amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, an incurable neuromuscular illness that we now just know as Lou Gehrig's disease. Now, he is a legend in his sport and well-known for many incredible feats, but he is especially remembered for his farewell speech and his iconic uh, luckiest man on the face of the earth speech at Yankee Stadium. Now, and while many of you, especially if you're a baseball fans, have heard this phrase, it's the rest of his short speech that I want to share with you as there are so many lessons to be learned from it. So it goes like this. So for the past two weeks, you have been reading about a bad break. Yet today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I've been in ballparks from seven for 17 years and have never received anything but kindness and encouragement from you fans. When you look around, wouldn't you consider it a privilege to associate yourself with such a fine, such a fine looking men as they're standing in uniform in this ballpark today? Sure, I'm lucky. Who wouldn't consider it an honor to be to have known Jacob Rupert? also the builder of baseball's greatest empire, Ed Barrow. To have spent six years with this, that wonderful little fellow, fellow, Miller Huggins. Then to have spent the next nine years with that outstanding leader, that smart student of psychology, the best manager in baseball today, Jill McCarthy. Sure, I'm lucky. When the New York Giants, a team you would, you would give your right arm to beat, and vice versa, sends you a gift, that's something. When everybody down to the groundskeeper and those boys in white coats remember you with trophies, that's something. When you have a wonderful mother-in-law who takes sides with you in squabbles with her own daughter, well, that's something. When you have a father and a mother who work all their lives so you can have an education and build your body, it's a blessing. When you have a wife who has been a tower of strength and shown more courage than you dream existed, that's the finest I know. So I close in saying that I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Thank you. And with that, and just two years later, Lou Gehrig died. It's a wonderful speech, and we've all been there. A situation has come up, and... We don't know how to react or bad news come. We don't know how to react. I want to talk about something that we all go through at some point in our lives, and that's a bad situation. Now, it's easy to get down on yourself when things don't go your way. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn, to turn that around and make the best of bad situation. So I want you to grab a pen and a paper for some tips and maybe some strategies that will help you get through anything life throws at, throws at you. So how do we do it? How do you make the best of a bad situation? Well, no one likes being in a bad situation, but sometimes it's unavoidable. The important thing is how you deal with it. So here are some things that I have found and that I've used with my clients on how to make the best of a bad situation. First thing is you have to acknowledge it, my friend. Acknowledge that things are tough right now and that it's okay to feel down about it. It's hard not to feel down right now. We're all trying to navigate this new normal that has sprung, sprung up around us and it can be trying, both mentally, emotionally, and physically. However, it's important to practice things such as self-care as many of us push on through these uncertain times. Take time for yourself, grab a book, write in your journal, connect with friends or family, uh, even if it's over virtual, you know, a Zoom coffee, as we say. Just do something completely mindless, but acknowledging our current situation and giving ourselves permission to feel discouraged or anxious is a strong step toward resilience. No matter how small, don't miss out on the simple successes in life. The tough times will pass, and when they do, we can look back on these moments with even greater strength for having made it through them. 
Second thing, friends, and this is such an important thing, is to talk to somebody you trust about how you're feeling. It's going to help you get things off your chest and off of your mind. Letting our emotions fester can have an intensely negative effect on us, causing us to feel overwhelmed and isolated. Reaching out to someone we trust for support is often the best way of managing those feelings. Talking about how we feel or talking about our, how we're feeling can help to put things in perspective and ease that stress because when we're able to vocalize our troubles, they start to seem less daunting. So it's so important to reach out, whether it be a family member, a friend, a coach, a counselor. Um, getting things off your chest can make all the difference in how we approach life and how we feel about ourselves. Third thing, my friends, is make a list of things that we're grateful for no matter how small they may seem. And this, this attitude of gratitude we talk about very often here, especially on our morning rounds. Being grateful is one of the most beautiful gifts that we have to give ourselves, no matter how small our thankful list may be. Taking a moment to acknowledge and express gratitude for the little things in life can bring more joy and contentment than we ever imagined. Take a few moments to reflect on all the countless things you are blessed with so many days. For something as simple as the beauty of a sunset or a kind word of a stranger, to having opportunities for education and personal growth, to the warm home that you're in, to that warm cup of coffee, whatever it may be, the power of expressing appreciation for small blessings is that it helps us recognize that our mindset, not our possessions, that determines how much joy we experience in our day-to-day -day lives. Even if your list feels small, know that each item is a reminder of how fortunate you truly are. Other thing, my friend, is to do something nice for someone else. Even if it's just a simple act of kindness, performing acts of kindness toward others is really an incredibly rewarding experience as it truly gives a sense of satisfaction knowing you have made somebody else's day. Now, can you do something as simple as as volunteering your time, helping somebody in need, or even just offering a warm greeting to a stranger. It's these little simple things, my friends. It sounds, it sounds like they may not work, but I, I can assure you with certainty, it does. It doesn't take much to spread cheer, yet the impact of expressing kindness can fill both yours and the receiver's heart with joy. Take time out of your busy day to do something small and meaningful for others. It will surely bring a smile to their face and one to yours as well. Now, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but you must focus on taking care of yourself both physically and mentally. So taking breaks when you need them, eat healthy foods, fill the body with good nutrition, and get some movement, movement in your life. Taking care of your physical and mental well-being is essential for functioning and thriving in life by setting aside really just a few minutes every day to prioritize looking after yourself. You're allowing yourself a chance to recharge, to regroup, and to stick to your goals. Eating healthy, nutritious foods helps us to fuel both your body and your mind so you can stay energized and focused. Making sure to take regular breaks when needed. These help prevent burnout that plagues so many of us while taking the time and effort needed to maintain good health. Exercise or any movement can also be an effective way of managing stress levels as well as helping you feel more alert during work. Taking care of yourself, therefore, doesn't mean just focusing on one aspect, but by paying attention to both your physical mind, your physical body, and, and your mind, your mental health, you'll be ready to tackle whatever challenge comes next. Remind yourself that this situation you're in is only temporary and that better days are ahead. It's easy to get overwhelmed with all the life's challenges, but it's important to remember that nothing is permanent and better days are on the horizon. Focus on the little moments within your current experience that brings you joy or, or act as lessons for personal growth. Remind yourself that your strengths are the things that, that are going to help you overcome the, 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 the things that you're struggling with right now. Use them to carry through whatever this moment holds. You may be facing a difficult circumstance right now, but know that there will come a time where you can look back and see how valuable this experience was. Hold on to that hope and keep moving forward. Brighter tomorrows are just around the corner. Oh, I get it. We've all been going through a tough time over the past several years, and that has been 
that has to be acknowledged. It's okay to not be okay. So reach out for support when you need it. Remind yourself of the good things you have in your life right now. Having an attitude of gratitude, as we say, can really, really help. Don't forget to take care of our own well-being too. Get some movement, get some exercise, fill your body with nutritious foods, and get some much-needed breaks that you need. And if you're able to do so, help others out by being doing nice things for them. Even small acts of kindness can make a world of difference. Remember that although this difficult situation is only temporary, better days are ahead. And if you're looking for even more strategies or even more solutions, then consider high-performance coaching. If you're stuck in this plateau, yet you don't know how to get to that next level of success, high-performance coaching may be just for you. I'm a certified high-performance coach, so if you click the link right beside this video, you're going to see a link that gets you on my calendar for a free one-hour coaching session to see if high-performance coaching is for you. So again, hit that link right beside this video. But until tomorrow, have a great day today and I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning for another morning rounds before your morning rounds. Have a great day. I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.